This is the latest AI gadget, the Rabbit R1. This is an AI called Open Interpreter, and I just gave it full control of my computer. And this is one of the first cars in 1911, driving in New York alongside horses and carriages. And don't worry, this will soon make sense, but we need all of this to understand the next big thing in AI. Because GPT and all your chatbots are only half of the recipe to make AI really useful. And the other half looks like it's just around the corner. I'm Enrico, I'm a product manager working in tech, and on this channel I go behind the scenes of the tech you use every day. But to understand what's going on, let me ask you a question. If you could build the first car ever, from scratch, along with all the infrastructure for it, how would you do it? Well, the best solution would be cars that transport a lot of people, different lanes at different heights to avoid traffic and even underground for fast and slower travel. This would be the most efficient solution, but it would never get built. It would require massive investments, massive coordination across the world, and we would probably miss out on the benefits of cars. So instead, you notice that everyone is already using horses and carriages to move around. There's already a road system in place for that. So instead of building the perfect system from scratch, you take this new technology and adapt it to fit the old system. And this is exactly what's happening with AI today. The ChatGPT wave of 2023 has bought us mostly this, chatbots. They are incredibly useful and these models are great at reasoning, but they cannot do anything really useful outside the boundaries of the chatbot itself. If you ask an AI model to generate a presentation for school about the largest animals in the world, GPT-4 is smart enough to understand which animals are we talking about and propose a slide structure, but this is not a presentation, it's just some text in the chatbot. It's still up to you to do all the actions and create the presentation. In 2023, we have cracked reasoning, but AI still cannot handle taking action. So to solve this action problem, there's two ways we can take. One is to use something called APIs. And this is how basically all the AIs that are doing things right now work. For example, if you want to build an AI system that replies to this YouTube video's comments with spiritual quotes, you can use GPT to generate the comments pretty easily. But then to take action and actually post them to YouTube, you need to use the YouTube API. It's something that YouTube controls and needs to make available to you. This is the same approach that the AI pin, the AI device that Humane presented a few months back, uses. If you ask the device to play a song that's a flex for guitarists on acoustic guitar, you will understand you're probably referring to Neon by John Mayer. But the AI pin only integrates with Tidal for music streaming and their API, so if the song is not there, well, you're out of luck. A real human would have just taken the song name, opened up Spotify and played there. But there's a second way to solve this actions problem. And finally, we are cracking it. This is the Rabbit R1. It's just been announced and it's an AI-powered device that allows you to use AI to complete actions. But while everyone out there is judging the device and the design and the interface, and don't worry, we'll get to that as well later, the genius part here is called the LAM, the Large Action Model. The AI model that makes all of it work, because they built an AI model that learned how to autonomously navigate the web. If the problem is booking a house for a getaway for 10 people, the old way to do it was manually building an integration between your AI and Airbnb's API and rely on what Airbnb makes available to you to build your app. Rabbit, on the other hand, said, it. We'll teach our AI to navigate websites like humans do by looking at the interface on screen and understand its logic. The AI will figure out that this is how you add more people for your search, and these are the listings. And if now I want to find something on Booking, say, instead of Airbnb, I can do it, because they didn't just build an Airbnb integration. They built a system that knows how to navigate the web. All of it. Instead of redesigning the world of tech to fit AI chatbots, they did exactly what cars did 100 years ago. They adapted to the existing infrastructure, which is the web. They built something on top of the existing world of carriages and horses. Rabbit also built a teach mode where you can record the action you do as a human and teach the AI how to complete a certain action on a certain website or set of websites. So the next time you can just ask the AI to do it. Under the hood, this works by realizing that you cannot treat interfaces just like long strings of, say, HTML code. But you can also not treat the web just like plain images. It's a mix of the two, and it's something in between, and that's what the LAM is doing. This is Open Interpreter, a project that's not as advanced, but it works in a similar way, by allowing AI to take over my computer and run commands, like create a file here, or navigate to this page, or do this specific action on the web. It's not exactly what Rabbit is doing, but the end result is quite close. So they are not the only ones taking this approach, but let's go back one second to Rapid's presentation. Get me right from my office to home now. Of course, I will book an Uber ride for you from your office to your home. Why do all of these tech companies have to show off new incredible technologies by showing you how to book an Uber 0.12 seconds faster? 
Booking an Uber or playing a song is something that already works. My Google Assistant have been doing it well for 10 years now. And the real problems that people have with technology, the ones that really get you frustrated are the complex ones, the wicked ones, the unpredictable ones. And these are difficult to solve. Making that report for your boss who wants data from four different places, and they all have different formats and require a ton of manual work. Or planning a house renovation, or doing research for a university project for all sorts of websites. These are the things where we feel the pains of technology not working seamlessly and just consuming our time. And this is where AI that can not only reason but take action is game changing. And it's where hours of work can become just a series of small prompts. It's not about booking an Uber 0.1 seconds faster. And this brings us to this device, the Rabbit R1. First of all, quick design analysis. Color and shapes, it's great. It's simple, it's punchy, it's approachable. It's been designed by Teenage Engineering, who makes some of the best industrial design in the world today. And I also made a video about the Ropey one that you can find right here. But number one, why does it have a scroll wheel if you don't even use it in the demo? And number two, I'm left-handed, so this probably wouldn't work great for me. But the biggest thing you should know about this device is that it's completely useless. And this is why it's genius. Think about it. This could have easily been an app on your phone. If it really works better than just opening up a bunch of apps like they say they would, you would just open the rabbit app on your phone and not use the others. But instead they build this new device just for that. And they price it at $199 without any additional subscriptions, which is just stupidly low. You cannot build a company out of a $199 device, even though it doesn't look incredibly complex to build and a screen is probably lower solution. And I believe this is exactly their strategy. I believe the real product that Rabbit is building is the lamp, the large action model, and this device is just a PR stunt. It's very hard to promote software, and especially software that's as novel and difficult to explain as this one. So instead, they made an approachable device that's highly recognizable, and that allows them to get their foot in the door with the consumer tech world. And you know what? It worked. Lots of people are talking about it, and they sold out the 10,000 units that they had for launch. This to me is a genius strategy to launch something as intangible and difficult to explain like an AI model. And I don't think this is the last time we'll see this. And if 2023 was the year of AI chatbots talking to you, I really believe that 2024 is gonna be the year where we complete the puzzle and the year where AI action models start to do things for you. And of course, like any new thing, this has its set of problems. Like what if the AI hallucinates or someone is able to bypass its security, but now this AI has full control of my computer, including deleting all my files. Will I just give the AI my username and password to log into websites around the web? There's a lot of questions, but if someone is able to implement this right, they could change the way we work and interact with technology arguably even more than ChatGPT did one year ago. And I'm really looking forward to action models help me write these very videos. Just like when I was doing research on all kinds of obscure websites and archives to make this video right here about the wild unknown story of how Italy almost became Silicon Valley.